Hi everyone, this is Fabi and today we are going to compare the Xiaomi Mi 10 to the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE 5G all while trying to figure out if Xiaomi could be your next phone. And I'll start off by saying wow. Just a few short years ago I wouldn't have dared compare a pretty high-end Samsung phone to any Xiaomi phone but here we are, it's 2021 and it's pretty obvious that Xiaomi is aiming at the high-end especially with the Mi 10 Ultra but also this Mi 10T which is really affordable but it has all of the flagship specs that you expect. Anyway, with Huawei pretty much out of the picture because they don't have access to the Google services, it's time for Samsung and Xiaomi to fight for the top spot. We are going to divide this comparison into six categories and those are going to be design, screen, UI, performance, camera and finally which one deserves your hard-earned cash the most. If you're only interested in a specific topic, feel free to jump to that section through the video progress bar. Okay, so first of all, the design. It's pretty easy here because with the Samsung, I can definitely see that some corners were cut so that they can basically fit in this budget. And this is something that we've seen with a lot of flagship killers throughout the years. The back is made out of a hybrid material, something that Samsung calls plastic, but in reality, it just feels like matte plastic. On the Mi 10T, we have Gorilla Glass 5 not only on the front, but also on the back with this mirror-like effect. Also, the color of the back shifts from dark gray to almost silver depending on the light. The frame is made out of aluminum on both which is to be expected but overall the design of the S20 FE just feels uninspiring. From the plain camera bump to larger bezels I just don't think the S20 FE takes the crown when it comes to design. The bezels on this phone are slightly larger than on the predecessor the Galaxy S10 Lite so I can't say that I'm pleased with this either. Although I can't say that the bezels on the Mi 10T are slimmer either, you can at least feel the much higher quality of the phone when you're holding it, especially because of the back glass. The camera bump is more pronounced, but at least the design of it is more interesting than just throwing three cameras in a column and making the bump much wider than it's necessary as it is on the Galaxy S20 FE. I must mention, this is not a four camera system as the holes would lead you to believe, one of them is just for design, just for symmetry, there's no camera there. I will say though, the Mi 10T is quite a bit heavier than the S20 FE, it's also larger mostly because of the larger screen and it's also one millimeter thicker, so if you're into thin and lights, the Mi 10T is most likely not for you. If these things don't bother you though, the Mi 10T is an absolute winner, being much closer to flagship territory than the S20 FE, at least when it comes to design. Things are going to get a lot more interesting now. Let's talk about the screens. So on paper, the screen of the Mi 10T might look like the absolute winner. And that's because it's larger, coming in at around 6.7 inches compared to the 6.5 inches of the S20 FE. And it's also got a higher refresh rate at 144 Hz instead of the 120 on the Galaxy S20 FE. There's a catch though. On the Mi 10T, we have an IPS LCD panel, whereas on the Samsung, we have an AMOLED. And this right here makes a huge difference. And really, it's the only reason why I think that the Samsung takes this category overall. Blacks are not as deep as on the AMOLED because of the backlighting. The refresh rate is not as impressive as it sounds on paper because of the high response time of the pixels, which sort of manifests itself as ghosting if you look really closely. Now, I'm not sure it would have fit the budget, but I can honestly say that the 90Hz refresh rate AMOLED screen would have been the better choice here. Because of the LCD panel, it also means that you are missing out on always-on functionality, but in my opinion, this is the smallest of drawbacks. On the other side, on the Samsung, is the usual AMOLED with really saturated colors. If you switch from vivid to normal colors and settings, it sort of seems too washed out. A little bit more than I'm used to on my iPhone. Next up, let's talk about UIs, and it's an important one because One UI and Mi UI are as different as they get. This comes down to personal preference though, so I'll show you how they both feel and look like, and I'll tell you what they can do and any drawbacks that they may have. Let's start off with Samsung. This S20 FE 5G rocks One UI 3 with Android 11, and to be honest, Samsung has got their stuff together when it comes to updates. 
I get security updates really frequently and I'll also be getting Android updates at least until Android 13. Samsung also has their own unique identity now compared to the TouchWiz days and I actually like some of their applications better than the stock Android ones, such as their browser, which I prefer to Chrome. Something great that Samsung did for one-handed use is using these large headers at the top, which disappear when scrolling. Their one-handed mode is elegant and it can be adjusted so the screen shrinks to exactly the size you need. As far as bugs and glitches go, I can happily report that I haven't encountered any and the interface is smooth all throughout. On the Mi 10T, we have Mi UI 12 running on top of Android 10, so we're already a step behind, but this should be updated to Android 11 at some point, hopefully. Mi UI feels a bit snappier and it also has a lot of great looking animations Maybe a little bit overdone, but it chews me up seeing stuff happening instead of the boring animations we all got used to. I like the fact that I can get to the quick settings panel through only one swipe on the right side of the screen instead of two on the Samsung, and the video toolbox is an extremely useful feature because it allows you to listen to music or podcasts on YouTube with your screen closed. It's not all rosy though. For example, the phone app is the default stock Android one and you can easily see that it's different from all the other MIUI apps. For example, the background is dark blue instead of black because I have dark mode on and the buttons just don't look the same. I'm happy to report though that there are no ads here. In the end, it comes down to personal preference and so if you like your UI to be more animated, go with MIUI. If instead you want a more sober experience, go with One UI. Performance wise, not much to say. Both are flagship level given the fact that the Snapdragon A65 is equipped by both. We have 6 gigs of RAM on both of these phones, but 8 gigs is an option. MIUI seems to be a little bit more aggressive with RAM management, but this can be tweaked on a per app basis so your most used apps won't get closed all of a sudden. I'm impressed I don't feel the change in refresh rate on the Xiaomi as it is adaptive, but I'm happy to report that it's snappy all throughout. One thing I like about the Xiaomi is the side-mounted fingerprint sensor. It's blazing fast, the fastest on any phone I've ever used so far. With the on-screen fingerprint reader on the S20 FE, I almost always have a hard time unlocking it and it's also much harder to keep your finger stationary on the screen because it tends to slide around. Overall, I'll give this category to the Mi 10T because the fingerprint sensor definitely tips the scale in its favor. Cameras are a category where you can often feel that flagship killers are cutting corners. In this case, the Mi 10T doesn't have a telephoto lens, instead Xiaomi opting to offer a 5 megapixel macro lens, which although miles better than the 2 megapixel macro lens I've seen on other phones, it still doesn't come anywhere close to the telephoto when it comes to usefulness. The main camera is a 64 megapixel shooter on the Mi 10T using pixel binning to get 16 megapixel photos, whereas on the Samsung we have a 12 megapixel sensor. Overall, both take good shots with Xiaomi having more details, but losing out on dynamic range and in low light conditions, which is why I'll give this one to the Samsung. The Mi 10T shoots 8K video, but that's a gimmick as there is no stabilization with 8K, so you most likely end up shooting 4K to get usable video. There's also a useful feature on the Samsung that I appreciate and that's Smart Take. So you're basically just pointing your phone at whatever you want for 10 seconds and it captures video, it captures photo, and it's really an interesting experience. Before the conclusions, if you found this video useful, make sure to like it and subscribe if you want to learn more about tech and engineering topics. By the way, only a really small fraction of you watching have subscribed, so if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, it really helps me out. So now the final question, which one should you get? Well, here's the deal, both of them are really good smartphones, but when it comes to price, there's a really big difference, and that is $699 for the Samsung versus $499 for the Xiaomi. And because of this price difference, it's really hard for me to recommend the Samsung. Yes, the camera is better on the Samsung, but on the other hand, the design of the Xiaomi is of a much higher quality and I do appreciate that. I can only recommend the S20 FE if you want an all-around better camera system, partly due to the telephoto and partly due to better dynamic range and low light capabilities, or if you absolutely must have an OLED, though I do recommend you guys check the screen of the Mi 10T in real life before choosing so. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you want to buy either of these phones, you can check the links to Amazon down below to get the best current price. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Stay tuned.